we saw in HTML5 stuff in there as well, but it really has to focus on the CSS2. I don't know if somebody has experience with the latest tricks and stuff in CSS2. Who <laughs> had uh, uh, a border radius with CMS3? Yeah. Or a gradient? Yeah. Or a shadow? Okay. Um, who knows flexible box model? A few. And you used it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I hope it will be still interesting for you. Yeah. But we will do, uh, we will show some other stuff as well. We will start with a few examples. So for the people who are uh, not aware of CSS3, HTML5, the difference between version 2 and version 3, we will start with some examples. There are some really good uh, examples on the internet. Uh, we're not going to go into the code very deeply because then we don't have enough time for an hour. So we hope we can uh, learn everybody a little bit. Okay. By the way, my name is Tom, and this is Tia. Uh, we are also part, you can see I have shirts, we are also part of the Google team. Uh, but today we will uh, limit the Google stuff in the presentation to the very, very, very basics. So we are not going to talk about Google, except one thing. <laughs> okay. Yes, sorry. The microphone is also connected to the camera. Use microphone? Yeah, it's connected to the camera. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started then. We'll first start with a few examples, some examples of CSS and HTML5. Uh, let's see, what do we have? So let's start with some Hoover panels, some cool stuff you can do with CSS, no images, just CSS. No flash, of course, nothing in the hands, you see some cool stuff you could do just with CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. Let's go to some. It's loading. Let's go to that one. See some uh, CSS3 rocks. And then some transitions. What will happen? Let's find out. Two sided cart, just with CSS. Stian, you can maybe explain a little bit. The code is here, so we have a question. No JavaScript? Yeah, no JavaScript. And, um, <laughs> it's all using. We need to the button. Yeah. Okay. Closer to your mouth. <laughs> well, uh, it's all using CSS3 3D uh, transforms. So there's no, again, no flash. So this actually even works on. on um, or below the iOS devices and Android. They're really useful when you need to do um, settings on the back side. We actually use it in Nuka Desktop to um, configure each, each connection because then you can put stuff like inputs and controls on the back side. Yeah. Really simple. Okay, let's see if we have something else. You can have, this is one Hoover, or you can have a tap, tap again. Configure. So that was the stuff Stian just talked about. You can use it to configure something. You can uh, just hit it and hit save. It flips back. Sorry? Zoom. Zoom? Yeah. Zoom. Control key. 
<laughs> it's enough? <laughs> so there's the configure button, and watch if we press it. Ta da! <laughs> So like the students who already notice it or, or using it today, like on Facebook or on Twitter, uh, the websites they're already using lots of CSS3, HTML5, you won't even notice it. Uh, you probably notice, notice it if you open the same website in Internet Explorer, <laughs> because it won't work. Uh, I don't know how much works in the latest version, but I guess not that much. So uh, if you use Chrome or uh, Firefox or Safari, then you have uh, like all these cool stuff. Can you hold it? Okay, so let's see if we have something else. Gears. So some transition, a nice slide. Resize your window. So if your window is not large enough, like on mobile devices, the images are not shown. And if your window is large enough, the images are shown. So you can do show other images if it's that size. And if the screen is larger, show larger images. Now you can move it and up here. That's <laughs> cool. Okay, <laughs> let's check out some more cool stuff. Somebody familiar with this, with these examples? Apple made some really nice HTML5 examples. They only run in Safari. Uh, some of them run in Chrome because they're all using WebKit. But to really uh, show it, you need to use Safari. So this one is a pretty cool one. If you, uh, if you have made a video and you want to use the title, and do some nice effects. Then, if it loads, it's a little bit slow. So, like it says, the demos are HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. And it doesn't load anymore, so it probably won't work over the mobile internet. We had to fix the internet here because the room didn't have internet and we really need internet. So let's see if we can use another example. So you see it here, what happens is you put the text and then the video, it comes through the text. So the, the text becomes like uh, transparent and you only see the video through the text. And then you can uh, transition the text, like rotate it or do fun stuff with it. Yeah, you can. Okay, this one is probably the third example. That one? Yeah. Wait, you're yep. That one. Uh, after it loads, probably. Yeah, like Tom was talking about the video, it's actually using a new CSS3 property called uh, Mask, which you can use images with um, alpha channels or transparency. So you can control precisely what is shown. So we'll try one more time to click it. Okay, it's loading. Here we are using um, they are using text to uh, to clip the the background. Uh, so you can do all kinds of stuff. You can even use SVG. So if you really want full control of how, how, how something actually looks like, it's really easy. And again, you don't need to use Flash or Silverlight or anything of those proprietary technologies. It just works. It's 
decisions. Yeah. 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 What are you looking for? Well, you probably write down the link and try it yourself at home because over the mobile internet. But the, exa the example with the text, can you imagine if you're like a magazine uh, web designer or you need to build a website for a magazine? You can really do cool stuff because you can do the same things without using Photoshop to, uh, to use uh, different type typo typographies. Yes. Uh, so it's really cool. And another advantage is the text, because it's in HTML5, it's, it's blank text in the source code. So if you use an image to set a title on an, uh, for a magazine, then Google it doesn't know there is a title on the image. But if you use HTML5 and CSS3, you can do the same effect without Photoshop. And Google knows, OK, this is the title of the magazine. So it's no image anymore. Sorry? It's faster. For this stuff, you need Safari because Apple built it and it's like a little promotion for their browser as well. But you can do the same stuff with Firefox and with uh, Chrome. So they only probably build in like a lock for other browsers. But the, the same stuff you see here, you can do it. Only Internet Explorer, that will be a problem. Uh, let's see if we have. If you can load the gallery. A little gallery without flash. <laughs> we really like it when there's no flash involved. I don't know if you noticed that yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the JavaScript used is just for setting the state. So most of these examples are just setting a new CSS class name that activates the CSS transitions. So the JavaScript becomes much simpler. So you, you don't need to use jQuery for animations anymore. You, you only need to use the JavaScript to set the class. And since CSS is doing the animations and transitions, it enables hardware acceleration because then the browser can figure out how it's going to transform property from opaque to transparent, for instance. So on devices like an iPad or Android, it will use the graphics card to do that. So it saves a lot of power, actually. And it's much, it's much smoother. So the JavaScript... Uh, is then again used for what it was originally intended to do. Just behavior. JavaScript was never created to do all the CSS and transforms and that kind of thing. Let's see if I can find a 3D cube uh, example to finish this stuff. It's like a real box with text at all sizes and you can turn around this one, it uses images, but the effect to render it is uh, CSS, so you, can, you get a, a box. You can put images in them, or you can just put text in them, and then you can click on it and do effects with them. Okay, so, next. Some little bit of code. Uh, this is the website, the CSS desk. Uh, if you guys had internet, it would be cool because you could see the same code on your uh, laptop because the example is shared. So if you want, you can uh, write down the link. I will zoom into it. <laughs> so that's the link of the example. Uh, let's see, I have another example. I will give that link to you as well, so you can already write it down. That's this one. 
The second one is the one with the flex box. So uh, this is the heavy stuff. We get we get to it very soon. Okay, everybody has the links. No, you have to wait. Yeah, I'll put them in Twitter. Okay, so uh, all yours. All mine. Yeah. Okay, so first thing you should point out is that, as you can see, this is actually just a button element, but it could be basically anything. Uh, and there's not a single image used at all to render this button. So there's no extra HTTP request when you load the page when you do this kind of stuff. So it's really fast. And it's actually really simple. Um, you have the background property first. This is using the a little bit older uh, gradient syntax. They have changed it, so it's actually much simpler now. But this is the one that still works in in um, iPhones and that sort of thing. So this actually creates the uh, background you see here. And then we have, the, of course, the, the border radius and the um, box shadow. You can do some really cool stuff with the inset box shadow because you can get this nice little line on the inside, which is pretty fun to play with. And um, of course, you can have multiple shadows. You can see there's a small shadow below, which is this one. And um, of course, the basic text shadow. The only web browser that doesn't support text shadow yet for some reason is actually IE. Even IE9 doesn't support that. They didn't have a good reason for it, but <laughs> that's how it is. And the most important, uh, uh, mo biggest benefit when you use CSS3 for this kind of thing is, is when you have multiple languages, because it's so easy to just give it some more text. Oh, this is a funky keyboard. So if, when you have a multilingual site, you can create this sort of effects and still maintain the translatability. Then your translator doesn't have to mess with Photoshop and that sort of thing. So you have the states and yeah, pretty simple. Do you want to take that? Yep. So another another little thing is like uh, the effect you saw before with uh, showing and not showing of an image based on the screen size. It's it's done with media queries. So to when you load your CSS files in your uh, HTML or within your CSS, you can define if the CSS is uh, or on which screen size the CSS should be applied. So you can have the even uh, vertical or hor or horizontally. If you use an iPad, then it's larger when you turn it, or it's smaller. So we want your CSS to be uh, defined for it. So we do the same, and that's a little problem because my screen is not big enough. We do it in uh, in Nuku Server in the backend. If your screen is smaller than 1,024 pixels, it will remove the margin at the left and the right. So everything is attached against uh, the sides of the screen. I can show it in code. I can show it in code. There they are. So here you see we have two CSS files. One is in template slash default, and the other one is in template slash tablet. They are the same except for a few uh, different styles in the, in the template by removing the, the uh, margin, left and right. And you call this just by adding another, or adding a rule to the file. Just say media is screen. You can say other stuff like phone or mobile or other things. You say screen and maximum wide is 24 thousand and twenty four pixels, so it will only be shown if the if the browser has a maximum wide of thousand and twenty four pixels 
otherwise the other one is minimum weight of 1025. So the one is above 24 and the other one is for below 24. That way you can easily target with very simple tricks, just another CSS file, just one uh, line of code more to your CSS. You can do uh, a mobile version of your website with, without even have to know anything. No JavaScript. And no JavaScript. You don't have to add uh, classes to your box or to your body and then uh, run a JavaScript uh, uh, file to check wh what browser client it is, if, if it's an iPad or if it's a mobile phone. You have all that sort of stuff, but here you can just do it based on the screen size and the rotation. Uh. Okay. Then the really cool stuff. The heavy stuff, yeah. Um, let's go for a little presentation about it. So, we wanted to talk about CSS flexible box model layout. What's it doing and why do we love it? It's a new kind of layout in your document. Before in, in CSS2 and HTML4, you could lay out a document with images and lay out text that was easy with CSS. But if you want to lay out a, a real user interface, you have to use floats and do calculations. How big is the screen size? What's the user doing? Is he, is he making a screen uh, smaller, bigger? All that stuff, we don't need that. So let's go over the, the flexible box. Uh, the ID behind it. So the children of a box are layouted either horizontally or vertically. So if you have divs in your HTML, you, lay, you can uh, position them horizontally or vertically inside each other without floating. Before, if you want to put two blocks, ele block elements next to each other, you need to float them. With flexible box, you just have to add, okay, I want to, in your CSS, I want these elements as a child be vertically aligned or horizontally. Then the next one, unused space. That was where before we used calculations with JavaScript because we had unused space, we need to fill the complete screen. Now unused space is assigned to a particularly child or distributed among the children. That's useful, That's useful because you don't do any calculation. The browser does this for you. And then lastly, finally, nest, nested boxes to build layouts. You can put boxes horizontally inside vertical, or you can put vertical inside horizontal. So you can build a grid with vertical alignment, with horizontal alignment. You can do everything with it. Then what about, I already told you, what about floats? Who, who, who used, who is familiar with floats in CSS? <laughs> you all know what a float left and a float right is. <laughs> you all know what a pain in the ass it is. <laughs> I mean, who, whoever invented it. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, and then you need a, 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 a clear fix or whatever to, to get stuff uh, going. Where we are going, we don't need floats. <laughs> so f please forget what you know. <laughs> Forget everything about floats and about sizes and about position because it will be completely different and it will be super easy. And then calculations, I already told or explained a little bit about that. We won't do any calculation in the CSS with or with JavaScript or doesn't matter, we don't do calculations. The browser calculates everything itself. The only thing we add is like a white, we have a column and it's 200 pixels white and another box next to it it fills like so before it will fill all the free space the height it, it's it's it, uh, it's 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 flexible so it will fill the height as well you can you can set a height and then another element will fill the the gap between uh, between the, the the parent item and uh, and the child's It's solved. 
It's completely solved. It's a good one. The problems you had before with multiple columns, you float them next to each other. You have a G column layout, so you make three diffs, you float them, and then how do they become the same height? You had to uh, add JavaScript to it to calculate or do some other weird stuff tables. like tables or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's completely solved. Yeah. Just forget about it. So how do we do it? We do it in CSS and we got some new things to play with. So we have some new properties. Uh, the first one is we have a new display property. Before you have box and or you have block and uh, now you get display box. So it's a new one you can add. And then you have eight new properties which will define how your elements are aligned, which one is flexible, uh, the direction of your uh, elements of your children. You can define them with box orient, box pack, box align, box flex, box flex group, box or order ordinal group and box direction and box lines. We'll not go into detail about what they uh, really mean. You will see in the examples we will play with it, so you will see what things will do. Okay, example time. Here it is. So this is the, the link for this one. Write it down. I have no idea how long the example will stay online on CSS Desk, but probably if you try it tonight or tomorrow, it will still be online. So what did we do? Let's have a look at... Yeah, that's flexible box model. This one. So you, you already see it. So let's have a look at the HTML. It's super simple. What did, what did we do? We added a header, which is a new HTML5 tag. Uh, we added some uh, parent div, which is has an ID frame, and we added four children. And then we added a footer. It's like a basic website, right? You have a header, you have a footer, and you have a left uh, column and some other columns to put some uh, Joomla modules inside the columns, and then you're done. Then let's see how it looks like at the moment. It's look like this. <laughs> So you have the header, you have the four columns, and you have the footer. And how I will, yeah, that's okay. Everybody can see it a little bit. I will zoom into it, but it's okay for now. Okay. Or you can maybe just do command plus to make the font size bigger. Yeah. That's better? Okay. So we have the divs here, the HTML markup, and then this is the CSS. And how much CSS do we have? That's everything to get the, ex uh, the example at the right. So let's go over it. We have the body. Uh, it's a default margin zero. You have to do it in every browser to uh, remove the, the margin. Uh, so that's not really something flex box thing. Then we have set a default font size, text align center, and then here we go. What did we do? We used the display box property. So we say to the to the body, from now on, you're a box element. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's actually uh, Mozilla that came with the, with the spec, so Firefox have it too. So they need to specify that they have it Moz, yeah. So that's a trade-off right now. So that's not really CSS, native net CSS yet, right? Well, actually it is. It's just um, the, the browser prefixes is in the spec. So it's, it's native. You just remove them when the spec is completed. No problem. It's your boyfriend. Say hi. Say, <laughs> say hi to him. Uh, so about uh, the WebKit stuff, you just replace WebKit with Moss from Mozilla, and then it works in Firefox as well. It's like Stian said, once it's uh, in the, the it's a default CSS uh, thing, you can remove the WebKit and the uh, Moss. Yeah, of course. So you can just use both. 
that's that's no problem. But I'm using it in Chrome, so I'm just uh, use the WebKit to make it uh, a little bit easier. So we say to the body from now on, your flexible box and your alignment will be vertically. So it was vertically, if you put it on horizontally, then all the elements will be next to each other. So let's go back to ver vertical. So vertical means because if we check the here, the HTML, you have three elements inside the body. So the vertical will only have effect on its children. So that's the header, that's the frame here, and that's the footer. Then the next one, we added the basic color to header and footer is green. And then we set some. Then we added some styling to the frame, which is the parent of the four columns. We said to the frame, okay, from now on your box as well, so you're a flex box now. You have to make yourself flexible, so you add a one. So the the frame will fill the gap between the header and the footer. Uh, uh, by default, it's it's zero, and you can go from from one, I think, till uh, infinitive. And the one with the highest number is the most flexible, so it will overrule another another element. And then we say here, reverse. If we remove this one by default, you have column one, two, three, and four. If you then say, okay, my client is, is in China, or I need to do a, a website uh, with light to, uh, left to right and right to left, that's no problem. There you go. Okay, and then we have the children of the frame. We set here. We say to them, okay, from now on, you're a flex box as well. So you need to say to each element in your HTML that it, it's a flex box. Otherwise, you can combine just normal CSS like you do today with flexible box model to do some of the styling. So you can combine both. It doesn't need to be a complete flexible box model layout, but yeah, why go back to floats if you can do this, right? And then we say to each element, okay, you're flexible, so every one of you will fill the gaps. So you are they are divided or they fill one fourth of the of the of the white. And then some uh, background colors, which is a nice one as well. You know how you do it uh, a zebra uh, table. In P you need to add uh, to PHP like a counter. You can remove that code. Uh, in in Uku server we already did, so we are just using it the CSS way. So uh, you just say every element, the end child, if it's an even number, then you are orange, and it's an odd number, then you are red. Is that available in CSS2 as well? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. No. Yeah. Uh, it's CSS2. Okay. Um, okay, so let's play with it for a little bit. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning that um, this flex layout, layout stuff is supported by Titanium. So if you make Titanium apps for the desktop, you can completely rely on this for your layouts. Yeah, Titanium has WebKit. So that's why you can rely, rely on it.
Okay, so what I just did, I added to the first element, the end element, number one. So the first element, I added a fixed white. Uh, it's 200 pixels. The other elements are still flexible. They're still on one, so they just fill the gap. So you have uh, the total amount of space minus 200 pixels divided by three. That's uh, the white there now. And if you resize, then the column number one, it will stay on 200 pixels. And the other uh, columns, they will just fill the gap. So everything is completely full of columns. Uh, OK. What can we do? Something else we can do? You can do it reverse to show that it still works. And again, since this is completely CSS based, there's no there's no attachment to the to the markup anymore. This is this is the kind of thing you before had to use tables to do, but then you're locked into the markup. Here, there are they are completely separated, so you get the full advantage of using CSS. Oh, it's direction, of course. <laughs> So you see, it still works. And why is not the first element 200 pixels? Because in the HTML, the first element is still the first element. We didn't reverse the HTML. We only reversed the CSS by direction is reverse. So it completely works. OK. Oh, sorry. Would it be possible to have a five, a fifth column uh, under four and three? Sure. Reducing four and three. Uh, and I add a column to it? Sure. And, and under them? Sure. Under four and three. Then, then you need to group four and three? is possible, <laughs> but in a live demo, <laughs> and with that editor, it's not easy to see what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> but I will, yeah, sorry. Under three and four, yeah, yeah that's that's possible. That's Without divs, um, yeah, I think so. No. Yeah, it's possible using flex group. Yeah, you you can group them. You can use flex group and then group. Press the presentation. 
that property there, those two. You need to use those two properties, and you can group boxes together, even if they're not like in the same, if they're not the same child. You can group them together, and then they will become one. You don't need surrounding bits. No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you group them together and then yeah. You're welcome. So this was a bad idea. <laughs> Ta da! Two nested tips. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go to something that exists. Uh, I'll open it here. It's a little bit screwed up. The other components, but this one is completely done in flex. And you have the tree, a tree column layout. And then you have some tickets here. And you can open a ticket. And you have some other cool stuff. So this, is, this, this doesn't contain any float element. So it's completely based on flexible box. Uh, like you see here already, the columns, they are, have the same height, everything has the same height. So you don't have to use JavaScript to calculate the height of one column and then make the other columns the same height. Everything is flexible. JavaScript. Yeah. The, the JavaScript views on this page is only for the Ajax, when you click anything in the, those sidebars. So um, for me, uh, for Tom, when he does this, he, he actually coded the JavaScript himself, and he's a designer, because he didn't have to worry about all those complicated calls, <laughs> and it works. And that's all thanks to the CSS3 Flex box model. So then he doesn't have to learn all this get computed style and all these calls that I have to study. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not yet, no. Yeah, we. This is a Nuku server. Uh, we are playing with it. We already built something completely in Flexbox. I will show it right away. It's like it's that one, right? No, it's not that one. Um, yeah, it's that one. So we've done a proof of concept. We completely rebuilt the back end of Joomla uh, in flexible box model, and it looks like like that. This is, for example, the uh, the articles component. Uh, because everything is flexible, the the YCB editor it's flexible. We made it flexible too. So it completely fits within the space you have. If you have a big screen, you have a big uh, YZ we get there. If you have a small screen, you have a small one. But in Joomla 1.6, I don't know how big it is, the income content for adding articles. But here, uh, it's nicely big. Uh, and then you have a, a sidebar. It's an image, so I can show you. But you can drag the columns. You also have you see the line here, so you have the scroll bar inside of if inside of the VCB editor. And downstairs you have, or at the bottom, downstairs, at the bottom, at the bottom you have revisions. It's a it's a panel, so you can click it, and then if you hide it by clicking it, it will slide down, and the editor will be fill up the space. No JavaScript. The only JavaScript for that is actually adding a class that says that says closed, and then that's all. 
for example, this is the overview of com content. Uh, you can filter on your categories and then. So we have done some work and some experimental things with uh, Flexible Box, and now we are looking how we can use it for Nuku Server or for other projects. This was a proof of concept we did for the Belgian police, because the problem. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this was a, 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 pro or a proof of concept we did for the Belgian police, and that's uh, when I go to the web things, and then we are uh, probably out of time. Uh, so what's the main problem when you have users that are not like nerds like we are, and you give them a Joomla, or you give them another system, and you give them an IE6 and an IE7, and then they, uh, they need to work with it, and then you are the administrator, and you need to solve their problem. What's the first question if you have a client saying, uh, I have a problem with Joomla? Are you using IE6? That's like, what browser are you using? Uh, what we did with this is making it a desktop application. So by the look and feel of making it a, de a desktop application, that's the first step. And then we really need to make it a desktop application. So then we go over to something else cool, and that's called Titanium which allow you to build desktop applications for Linux, Mac, Windows, and just by using CSS and HTML5, or CSS and HTML4, or CSS2, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I will show you that one. You had a question? Uh, so if you didn't, if you don't use a desktop application, how will you support all the browsers? Uh, you, that's that's the problem, and that's the problem we solve by building a desktop application. And why not? For the front end of a website, of the ba or the back end? For the back end of a website. Yeah, if you, if we are talking about using Flexbox for the front end of a website, yeah, then you have to play it. Yeah, then you can you can play with it on every mobile device and iPads, iPhones, Androids because they they are using the latest versions. They are not using Internet Explorer. So this is already really cool stuff to make like a second template in your website. Uh, use Flexbox and make very easily very powerful layouts for uh, for every website. But using it in, in general for your, the front end, you have the browser issue at the moment. It will work in Chrome, it will work in Firefox, but you have the problem with Internet Explorer. Um, and it's really a, a thing to, to build something that, that is away from a website and more onto a desktop. So showing the information will already be different than you do it on a normal website today because you have the complete, uh, or you have the flexible box model, you can use the complete white, you can play with the columns, you can use sliding transitions and, and everything. So it's more like, and there are uh, Facebook applications you install on your desktop, but it's just a website. It's just CSS and HTML, but it's the same information you get from Facebook, but within the user interface of a desktop program, Mm -hmm. jQuery have a yeah, and jQuery have a plugin for the flex layout that you can use for IE. It doesn't work for all the properties, but you can do much of it. So you have a have that as a fallback. So now about desktop applications. Uh, this is Nuku Desktop. It's a desktop application where you can add connections, uh, which are sites. Uh, we only uh, allow Nuku server sites, but you can make it a Joomla as well. Uh, the code of Nuku Desktop will be open source and will be public available in the coming uh, months, so you can play with it yourself and make for clients a desktop application. Now, what I just showed you. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to show this one. Uh, so what I just showed, showed you was the, the ticket interface. It's our new support portal we were building for Juma Tools. And I've made it a desktop application. So if I have an agent who needs to give support, the component is in the back end of my Joomla, but he only needs to have access to the ticket system. So you give him Nuku Desktop or something else, and he logs in. Fixing that. We're fixing that. He logs in, and he only sees his ticket support portal. So it's the same component. It's it's the same. It's really the same, but he only has access to this. So you don't have to. Sorry. Well, at the moment, it's it's a little bit hacked into it, but you can control it by allowing a user only to that component or to your component. Uh, or yeah, you have different ways to do it. Uh, at the moment, it's a little bit ha it's a little bit hacked, but um, it's the ID. It's 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 a showcase. So uh, it's work in progress. But then you need to ha add ACL uh, or add ACL to the desktop application, so we only has access to uh, a certain component in your website. But this is uh, this is great because he doesn't know need to know anything. He doesn't even know it's a Joomla or it's a Nuku. He just see the component. And you can even do this in Joomla today if you write your own uh, create your own backend template. Uh, then you can use Flex as well. So. And then how did we create Nuku Desktop? It's built with Titanium. Mm. Accelerator. These guys are here as well. Are they here, like in this room? <laughs> ah. <laughs> so this is really cool stuff because you can build with one code base applications for mobile and web. You can create applications for Windows, Mac. Uh, Linux, iOS, Android, all within Titanium. So the stuff you just saw with Nuku Desktop, it will run on Linux and on Windows. If you want to create a mobile application, then you use Titanium Mobile, and you create with one code base an application for iOS, Android, Windows phones. And a real cool thing is or a real cool example, is Wunderlist. I don't know if, if somebody knows Wunderlist. It's an application and they, oh, it's logged into my account. <laughs> so like this is the backend, okay, now you see it. Uh, they have applications for every device. I installed it on my Mac, I have it on my iPad, I have it on my Android phone, uh, I have it as a desktop application. Wunderlist. So this is in the browser. It has a desktop application. Uh, invite friends. No, thank you. <laughs> this is the desktop application. So this is the same we did with Nuku Desktop. It's a desktop application running the back end of, or the front end of the Wunderlist of your account, showing it. It can be a website, uh, like an iframe. You can use this to just go to your website using an iframe and then create a template in your website using flexible box. And then you're certain that somebody who's going to that page is viewing it by this application. And you can use flexible box model because you created a, 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 a containing environment. You can use it for a, for a browser, of course. Well, it's, it's more like a um, site-specific browser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you check, uh, where is Wunderlist app probably? Oh no, here it is. So they have support for iPhone, iPad, Android, Windows, Mac, OS, uh, Mac, and that like, they announced it and they had it. If you have today, you, you build an iPhone application on native, with, with the native tools from Apple, then you have to wait two, three months till the developer gets an Android application with Titanium, 
you build it in one go and you support everything. And that's a little bit where we are going, we think. Going to a more environment where you have desktop applications like, for example, uh, Facebook or Twitter. You already have uh, Tweetech. Tweetech, it's, is it bought by Twitter? Uh, is it confirmed? Tweetech uh, or Twitter bought Tweetech? So they have, uh, I have it installed. I, yeah, it's here. So this is TweetTech with like the same user interface of their desktop application, but it's running in the browser as a Chrome application. So with the current features you have in CSS and in HTML, you can build desktop looking applications in your browser and then bring them to somebody's desktop by using Titanium or bring them to an iPad by using Titanium or just build them natively on iOS. Uh, some, some else, something else I have. This one is cool. What they did is they just made a specific website for Chrome. It's just New York Times slash Chrome. So you can open it in every Chrome browser and because it's only for Chrome, the New York Times knows that you are visiting it in Chrome, so they can use flexible box model, CSS3, HTML5, and if you open it with uh, Firefox or if you're opening it with Internet Explorer, they just redirect you to the normal New York Times website. So if it opens, I will be happy, it's slowly. Uh, maybe see if you have something else. Uh, yeah, we have two minutes left, so we will do some uh, questions. So, for example, in, in Chrome, you already can install web, web apps in, inside your Chrome. They can both run natively by really installing them, or they can be a link to a website, like an iframe. But because it's Chrome and they install it into Chrome, you are sure that they are using Chrome, so you can use all the latest stuff like HTML5 and CSS3, flexible box and everything. So that's something uh, we think we're going. We're going to uh, less websites, more applications, more... Uh, sorry, you're not... You <laughs> Oh, here you have it. Okay. So, to conclude, this is the, the New York Times. So, if you open it in Chrome or you do slash Chrome, then you see your, uh, or you see the articles like this. You can uh, scroll through them. It's all... Uh, done with CSS3 and HTML5 and a little bit of everything we uh, we showed you today. It's loading. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, and and I think there we can we can help out, or everybody can help a little bit by just telling to their boss by removing EA6 from their computers at work, because at the, at the moment the, I think the most users who are using EA6 are uh, companies who don't want to upgrade, or they're saying, or the IT department says, okay, it works today, we we don't touch it. Maybe we don't really know about it, how it works, so it works. Let's keep it that way. And 
and it's too expensive or so yeah we, we it's so it's we created it a little bit or Microsoft created it a little bit by making it hard to upgrade if my Chrome I don't even know that it's upgraded it just upgrades Firefox if I see on, on, on our websites the, the the statistics from the Firefox or the Chrome versions I mean it's from one day to the other it's a newer version everybody all, all visitors are from one day on, on the next day on a newer version so we learned probably a little bit from the Microsoft or from the EA story how to not do it and some people are doing it better and some have a hard time to upgrade Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the specifications you, you showed today are not even finished yet, so we are not implementing non finished uh, uh, things from HTML5. There are 100 specifications, and the ones that are finished we are using, like now in IE9, and the, there are more coming in IE10. But the things you showed today are not working in IE9 for sure. And the things is with, uh, with Chrome, for instance, you say. Updates every day. No, I'm, yeah, yeah. And it also has problems with development as well because they go forth and back and you start developing a new specification and it changes. So you're, you're building stuff that doesn't work in future versions of uh, Chrome or stuff like that. So you have to be careful with that. We are for a open and web standard based um, web and I think we're doing great stuff with IE9. More great stuff coming up with uh, IE10. Uh, but we all should um, use the things most people use today, and a lot of people are still using IE and Chrome and Safari as well, and Firefox is growing. Um, new stuff you can experiment with in uh, HTML5 labs. It's a special thing where new specifications nearly end you can practice with, so you can start building new, new stuff. But at the moment, I think it's wise to just use uh, the, the specifications that are finished and we all agree. I think I uh, sorry we didn't agree about it because it's a concept and I think it's uh, most of the things that there are on the Chrome and Firefox as for today is probably the way to go and uh, and Microsoft's still holding back, you know, so the evolution of the web is getting behind because still Microsoft is holding back, you know. I, I, I agree what you said about the some things is not finished yet. But uh, like Microsoft takes taking too long to make support, so it's holding back the progression of the web. I'm saying. I kind of disagree a bit. I think that historically, yeah, that was the case. IE six, IE seven didn't do anything because they had a monopoly. I think since then they they are changing. Uh, you look at the uh, CSS we see today, and they're all still prefixed with was and WebKit because those browser manufacturers aren't sure of the information implementation they've done yet. It's great to experiment. I think the goal for us giving this presentation was because you have the, the thoughts about IE6 and, and we can't use like the latest stuff but if you think outside of the box and you start using something like uh, what the New York Times is doing then you can you can use this stuff for client projects but you have to use it in a controlled environment or you could or you could uh, you could use titanium build your own browser or you can even use uh, the chromium uh, project uh, you can use it as a, as a base to build your own real your, your own real browser and and provide that to your clients for intranets I mean how many companies are using intranets and are using Joomla for intranets and they have the problem they have the problem with IE6 for the Belgian police we are, we are going to provide them a desktop application built on titanium one application 
one browser that's for us one browser to support we don't have to ask which browser are you using every uh, uh, everything will be the same for everybody so you can already start doing that for your clients or for your projects or build uh, a chromium uh, or a chrome uh, template for your website just add slash chrome and you can play with it okay Thank you all, and enjoy the rest of the day and the rest of the weekend.